we're in Portadown here at Portadown Station. And we're going to take a closer look at the Portadown Armagh railway line because there were, the first time I did this there were some features which I missed. I wouldn't mind going back over them again. So there's the modern station and I invite you to look at my other video where I discuss in detail the stations on the Portadown Dungannon line. There's quite an interesting history behind Portadown Station. Uh, this was not the original location, it was actually a different location, but uh, that's not what we're going to talk about today. Let's make our way through this car park here. Uh, this car park, there's a road that goes around, yeah, we can just about see it from this side of the road. This big triangular car park used to be, well, it's, I think it's still owned by TransLink, it used to be uh, part of the railway yards in Portadown. A lot of the signalling, I think the, uh, the railway roundhouse might have been down here as well, I think. The locomotives were maintained. This is where the line split into three coming out of Portadown. This is the line going south, the existing line to Dublin. Going west, it used to go to Dungannon, and straight ahead used to go to Armagh. <clears throat> so uh, it's the Armagh line that we're interested in today. Now this bit of road that was built, it was elevated above the height of the old railway. I'm not quite sure what the intention was with that. I hope it was with a view to potentially reopening the railway, because all you got to do now is tunnel through here. It's uh, <clears throat> not impossible to to uh, get a bridge put in here. And obviously there is a bit of expense associated with it. And then this road here, this part of the Northway, this A3, this is running very close to or alongside the uh, course of the old Armagh Railway. I think it ran roughly where this grass verge is here. And we go under a few bridges. <clears throat> now these bridges are... Uh, notice how there's a bit of space here underneath the bridge. Now I don't know if this space was left for the purpose of either a future widening of the road or a future reopening of the railway. But either way, it's pretty fortunate. It looks to me like they left plenty of clearance there for our trains to come through. Um, obviously you wouldn't have this gradient here, you'd have a the train would be coming out of a bit of a tunnel here. My only concern would be maybe future electrification, you know, is there enough headroom in there to get the wires? I'd have to lower the tracks slightly, but that should be doable. A couple of lampposts there, shouldn't be hard to move out of the way. And there's, a, isn't there another bridge farther down, I think, somewhere. Yeah, plenty of room there for the railway, I think. It's certainly enough room for single track. Double track might be a bit more of a challenge. But uh, that's a little hard to tell from here, but from what I can see, I think there's enough room there for double track. And th there you go, there's the other bridge I was thinking about. See that? See the amount of clearance again? I don't know if that was for a future widening of the road. Fortunately, the road has not been widened. Oh, I hope it never gets widened because highway capacity expansions, as you know, are not the solution to road congestion. Never have been, have never worked anywhere. I don't know of anywhere where it did. But there's plenty of room there, I think, for... That looks like there's plenty of room for double track. Double track railway going through there. And again, look at the height. So I wonder would have to lower the track bed and uh, squeeze in the, the wires in any future electrified network. But look at that, there's plenty of room there on the side of the Northway. For the railway line and as we get down to I think it's around about here this is where the road curves to the left and that is where the yeah there this is where so if you follow that fence you're following the path of the old railway and it diverges from the road and goes out into the fields and that's where we're going ahead out now we're going to follow the old line and our first crossing point is this now the first time I looked at this I wasn't sure how the railway could have gotten through here as it looks quite hilly and I thought there was a river on this side of the uh, this side of the road. Was this a bridge over the river? It looks to me, the more I look at it, it looks like this was a uh, grid separation. It looks to me like the, this was a bridge over the railway. And this is a cutting that was then filled in. It's been filled into a great height, <clears throat> but I get the impression this was a cutting that has been filled in. So the trains would have passed underneath this bridge here. And this little bit of water, I don't think that's a river. I don't see any rivers nearby. I think it's just the, the remains of a cutting that has filled with water. So shouldn't uh, so there should be shouldn't be the hardest thing in the world to dig this up again. 
get that cutting re-established. Most of the cuttings in the bank that's on this line are still intact. This is not one of them, but you know, it's, uh, the fact that so many of the the fact that so many of the cuttings and embankments are still intact is probably why the price tag for the reopening of this line seems so low. I think something like one million per mile, as opposed to HS2, which is coming out at something like two hundred million per mile. This is a really low-cost project. So this is roughly where the trends crossed over here. I think this is the old line. Trends crossed over here, and the first time I looked at this house, I was wondering what it was doing there. I wasn't sure how old it was, but uh, from the number of chimneys, I see three chimneys there, which tells me it's an old building. It's not aligned with the road, it's aligned with the railway. And it's very similar in appearance to what I now know are crossing keepers' cottages that were built on the Great Northern Railway. Back in the days of manually operated level crossings, you had someone living beside it to operate the gates. So it's a crossing keeper's cottage, I think, that has been converted to a modern modern home. Got a crossing point here. Is there anything to see? I wonder is this where the tracks are? Yeah, there you go. There's a pair of there's a pair of rails that haven't been lifted. Still in the ground. Fantastic. I wonder why these were left here. Was it useful to the farmers for sliding stuff in through that? I don't know. <clears throat> Let me know if you know anything about these rails and why they're still uh, still intact. And you can see there the path of the old railway very as clear as anything. I think the trains went across and down what is now that lane. Very cool. Some of these houses look a little close to the line there. Some farm buildings. There's a farm building there that would probably need to be moved. Bit of an embankment still intact. Clung Road. Uh, not much left of the old railway there. So this is where we do get into. Yeah, I think this house was built on top of the track, or else very close to it. So there could be uh, issues here when it comes to reopening the line. There have to be some compulsory purchase orders. Keep following the trees. Some more farm buildings that would need to be moved. Of a cutting there, and then this is a point where the tracks really disappear. The land was returned to agricultural use, and the cutting reappears again down here at the Rich Hill Roundabout. Old bridge here, isn't it? Yeah, there it is. There's the old bridge. So that bridge crosses over the river. There's an arch here. I'd imagine there would have been a bigger arch over this road since removed. Either an arch or a series of arches. It'll be interesting to see what those look like. I don't know if there's any photos of it. If you, ha if you have photos of this area, do let me know. I'd imagine this would have been a quite impressive structure. Now this, I thought this might have been a level crossing the first time I looked at it, but I think it's actually an old grid separation. This looks like an old bridge over a cutting, and the cutting has been filled in. So there's the route. We're looking up towards Port of Dan, uh, looking down towards Armagh, and in this direction we're looking up towards Port of Dan. Bit of an orchard. Is that a, van a vineyard or an orchard? It looks like a vineyard. They're really growing wine in County Armagh now. So that cutting would need to be dug up again. Some farm buildings close to the line, but not directly on top of them. And then here we come to Rich Hill Station. This is a masterpiece here. This has been beautifully restored. I saw some older photos of this building when it was the station building when it was derelict, but it's now a private residence. And the owners have put in railway gates, or gates in the style of level crossing gates on both sides of the road, which they had no need to do, but they did it anyway. I think this is fantastic. There's an old. Uh, Passenger shelter there, I think. A ladder, a signal cave, the base of a signal cabin. I'm not sure what that is. Signal cabins aren't usually in the middle of the station, though, are they? So it's probably a passenger shelter. Let me know if you know anything about that. And then this house here. So this building, I think, is now a private residence. I don't know if this is part of the same residence, probably a different one. This house is quite interesting. 
because it's identical almost to this, which is the Station Keeper's House, Castle Wellen. This, which is the Station Keeper's House in Victoria Bridge, County Tyrone. Same architecture, same, same shape, same size, same style. This one has a little semaphore signal beside it too. And this one here, even in uh, Navan, County Meath, look at it, same style. This is part of the Great Northern Railway too. Fantastic. So you see this building popping up at different locations all over the country. The more you explore these railways, it's really quite interesting. And they recycled the same architecture and the same designs. So uh, getting Rich Hill Station reopened, that would be maybe not the first thing, uh, maybe not very high on the priority list, but eventually I would like to see that station reopened and any further development of the area around Rich Hill. And you can develop a whole new village around here, around the station, a transit-oriented development as they call it here in the United States. Okay, here's a grade separation, which is quite interesting. So this looks like a road, this looks like an old bridge that was um, not terribly wide. It would have been uh, roughly this wide. And that wall was demolished, but this piece of foundation here was retained. Looks to me like the bridge was filled in underneath and the road moved over to here. The bridge has been widened. So, yeah, the trains would have passed underneath here and through a cutting which appears to have been largely filled in now. So this piece of the cutting would need to be dug up again. The bridge would need to be reinstalled here. I don't know if the original bridge structure would uh, still hold up, but it'd be nice if they could at least retain this wall and this railing, keep the old style. Maybe have a replica of this wall on the other side. Quite exciting. So I think that was, was that Sandybank Road? Nope, it was this road here. Let's press on. Next crossing point is this one. There's a bridge still intact. It looks to me like you wouldn't have to do a whole lot of work here. Maybe clear some of the ivy off, but uh, the bridge is, if you can still walk underneath this, then it's probably still good enough for trains to go underneath. Just get in there with uh, the diggers and the machetes and clear out the undergrowth. Uh, at least you don't have to dig up that cutting again. It's already dug for you. Now, is this Drumnilly, Drumnilly Road? I believe it is. Okay, so this I think is roughly where the old railway line crossed the road and some houses have been built very close to it here. That could be probably one of them. That's about as complicated as it gets I think for reopening this line. Getting in between these houses. Again, there might need to be compulsory purchase orders here for these homes. But uh, you know when they built the city of Craigavon, they demolished people's homes for a lot less than this. The most people's homes put nothing in their place in a lot of cases. Now this used to be the site of a, a halt called Retreat Halt and I can't find a whole lot of information about it. It was opened in 36, closed in 57 so it didn't last very long. So I wonder was this some sort of wartime thing? There's a story behind this, uh, unusually named as well, Retreat Hut. I wonder were, were GIs or something stationed nearby? And incidentally, what is this? What's this thing up on the hill here? I've never seen this. I've never had any business down here. Some sort of monument. Did a Spitfire crash in the field here or something? Let me know in the comments if you know anything about that. I'm very curious about what that is. There it is in the field, see the shadow? It's uh, far from any road though, so I would love to know what that is. Some sort of war memorial. And there's your house very close to the road, or very close to the, uh, the old railway. So you might be able to squeeze past the house. I don't know. Hard to tell from these satellite photos. Look at these cuttings all still intact. It's just a matter of cutting trees down in a lot of places. where the cutting becomes an embankment which then goes over the abutments of an old bridge still largely intact 
So I wonder how much of this structure could be recycled into our, our rebuilt bridge. I'd be surprised if uh, if it could be reused. It'd be nice if they maybe take the blocks away and then build a new bridge and put the blocks back in, use them as a facade or something. Is that possible? I'm not a structural engineer. Well, let me know if you, th you know how feasible that is. And, uh, not much left of this bridge either. I don't see any of the stonework. I don't see any of the masonry. It's just a little bit there at the bottom, I think. But that bridge is largely gone. Valley Brahman Road. I believe there's quite a substantial bridge remains here. Yeah, this is. Uh, look at that. It crosses over at an angle, so it's. Quite a substantial ruin. Very cool. So, yeah, let me know if, uh, if you know anything about this, how feasible it would be to recycle any of this structure. And I see these bricks here. This brickwork seems to have been put in at a different time period. It looks to me like these bricks, this would have been bricked up after the, the line was closed. That's my theory. So the trains, the track bed would have been roughly at the height of these large blocks. So that was uh, this would have been part of the permanent way, as I believe it's called. This must have been a nice old bridge. Look at the details. It's amazing how visible this line is. There's a shed. Shouldn't be hard to remove that. Our shed. And now we're getting close to the Lockall Road, so you can really see the line here from the road. I wonder can you see it from here? We're looking in the right direction, I think. Uh, yeah, the line went somewhere along there. You can definitely see it from here, though. You definitely could see it from there. If, uh, yeah, there you go. There's there's an old arch. Look at that. Isn't that fantastic? Those are the trains used to run over, and this arch. Let the farmers get into their field. I don't know if you get a modern tractor in there now. I don't know if there's enough headroom. It'd be cool if these arches could be retained. I wonder if they're strong enough to hold a modern railway. There's been no maintenance on these. I don't know how much maintenance has been done on these over the years. So I don't know how strong they are, how structurally sound they are, but it would be nice if we could retain that. Well, let's press on. I think there's another one of these arches visible from the road. Somewhere down here. Yeah, there it is. Look at that. Isn't that fantastic? So it looks like there's quite a bit of headroom there. Hard to tell how thick that is from the distance. So again, is that strong enough to hold a modern railway? Does it need to be reinforced? Would it need to be rebuilt? Not entirely sure. I wonder how much of this structure could be recycled into the reopened railway. It would be great if it could. And now we're getting into the outskirts of Armagh. This is where a lot of people think too many houses have been built on top of the line. The truth is, hardly any houses have been built on this line. So opening this railway would not be as hard as many people think it is. So this is roughly where the trains came through. There might have been some great separation here. I see these boulders at the side of the road, which that hints at a demolished bridge. There must have been a bridge over this road, and I suspect these boulders are the remains of it. I've seen this on my exploration of other railway lines. This is where we start to get through. A bit more of a built-up area. I think the line went on the other side of that wall, I think. Yeah, I think the trains ran on the other side of that wall. And down we go into what is now an industrial area. So this is where the line went down to Armas Station, which I think is where Armatile is now. This is Armatile. We'll talk about Armatile in a minute, but these buildings, uh, these businesses, 
shouldn't be hard to renew, uh, relocate. I think there's a yard here that's owned by Translink, I think one of them is. There's a recycling center, shouldn't be hard to relocate that. There's this is an empty derelict ground, this looks like a, an empty building, it doesn't look like it's operational when this photo was taken in 2014. So there shouldn't be a problem demolishing that. Yeah, look at that. No redeeming qualities whatsoever. And you might think, well, why not just, uh, well, why bother these other businesses? Why not put the station in here? Well, we'll come to that in a minute. These are businesses which I think could be readily relocated. There's not many businesses in here. And there is a very good reason why we would want to put the station back in its original location. That's a substantial looking business there, but um, and here's where we get down to Armatile. So I'm going to get on my soapbox here in a minute. So there's Armatile on the site of the old Arma station. It's got these arches and it's got this arch work here and built into the walls, which I think the architect put in as a as a nod to the the site's railway heritage. But let's look at some of the older buildings. Let's just go down the street. Let's look at some of these buildings. Okay, look at these businesses here. Look at this here and this one. Looks like a pub. It could be a pub. It's a bar and off license. Okay. So, where's the car park for this pub? There is none. Where's the car park for this business? There is none. Where's the car park for the people living here? There is none. This is how streets used to be built for centuries. They weren't built behind car parks. They were built on the street. The building comes up to the footpath all the way up to the footpath and you walk into the building from the street. You can arrive here as a pedestrian. If you arrive as a, as a car driver, you park your car somewhere. You park it on the street, you park around the side street, you find a car park somewhere, you figure it out. Okay, people do not generally find it terribly difficult to find somewhere to park. If they did, these businesses would not be operational. Okay, let's go back up to Armatile. Now what do you notice about it? It's set back off the street. It doesn't come up to the footpath. It's at this junction. You know, if this was built several hundred years ago, even the corner of that building would be at this point, right at the corner of the uh, of the street, on the footpath. But instead, it's set back off the street. Now, if you're a pedestrian, if you're arriving from, say, you're walking from these houses to Armatile, and you want to walk into the building, how do you do it? Is there a gate for you here? Nope. You have to walk past, past this wall, round this corner, up this street, up all the way back to here, make an enormous detour to get in through this gate, and then you get in through the gate, you walk through a car park, and then double back on yourself again until you finally make it into the building. So this is what is known as an automotive-centric building. This is automotive-centric architecture. This is designed for people to arrive by car. This is not designed with pedestrians in mind at all. If it was designed with pedestrians in mind, uh, the building would be, oops, where am I? Lost it there. If this was designed with pedestrians in mind, the building would come right up to the edge of the, uh, the sidewalk, the footpath. And if you're arriving here as a pedestrian, to get into that building, you have to act like a car. You have to walk, make an enormous detour, walk through a car park where no provision is made for you as a pedestrian, and finally make it into the building. So Armatile is clearly expecting their customers to arrive by car. And it's also one of these businesses that's set, so back, set back so far off the road that it has to resort to these big plastic signs and this billboard here to remind people that it's here. Because if it wasn't for those, you probably would drive right past it. So Armatile is clearly expecting their customers to arrive by car, which tells me that it doesn't really matter where this business is located. Because people in cars can drive big distances. Pedestrians have a much shorter range. People who drive cars, you know, if you're coming from this part of Arma and you're going to Armatile, then it's no different from driving to Armatile if they were located here, on this side of town, in this industrial area, where there's plenty of room for them. In other words, Armatile does not have any compelling reason to be here. 
but the railway does because the railway will be accessed by pedestrians who want to access all the cool and interesting features that Armagh has to offer. The cathedral, the town centre, shops, the cafes, the restaurants, the historical uh, attractions. All within walking distance of a train station that's put here. If your train station is up here, that's a significant walking distance from the centre of the city. If your train station is out here, it's beyond walking distance of the centre of town, which is why I think the train station in Arma really needs to be back at its original location. I really think they got it right first time when they built that station. So that's the Portadown Arma railway line. And the Market Hill line goes out here. It's a different story. I invite you to watch my other video on that. And uh, at this point, the feasibility study is underway for the reopening of this line. And I hope that the people conducting the study are familiar with urban planning and not just transport policy, because urban planning and transport are interlinked. You can't just look at transport in isolation. You have to look at how train stations fit into the surrounding environment. This area around the old Armagh station is ripe for regeneration. And the ABC Council, I think, really need to be part of the conversation about how to regenerate this area. How could you build residential development, commercial development, a mixed use development, a vibrant community that you could build around a train station reopened here within walking distance of the center of the city. Huge potential.